All right, it's been a, a little while since I've done Danganronpa. No, I don't want to just stop the game, please. I don't care about that. So, yeah, um, we are now in November, and I did not finish this game in October like I was planning. October was a bit of a shit show in terms of like trying to keep to a consistent, like, you know, streaming schedule. I say schedule in big quotations, but I like to stream on the regular. October was not a good month for that. But you know what? I started this game, I'm gonna finish it, so. Oh, there's my manual save. So last time on the episode of Danganronpa Z. So yeah, Hifumi and what's their face were both modeled at the same time. Oh, what was the name of the other person? I forgot. Ah yes, uh, Haka. I forgot what his full name was. So now we've got to figure out who modeled both of them. Eh, yeah, got nothing to say right now. I guess I should investigate. Another hammer, so I'm guessing this is the biggest hammer of the ones that we've seen so far. Justice Hammer 4. I don't think she's dead. She may have passed out. Yeah. However, aren't we missing a Justice Hammer three? Yeah, there should be a third one. Yeah, that, that, that did seem unusual when I saw that. What? What? I'm probably not going to be doing too much physical reading, plus when we get to the class trial there'll be a lot of voice acting anyway. What? Oh yeah, I guess they did not see that body yet. Hey! I see. Let me know if the volume mixing is okay, by the way. Oh. Oh, hi, Celeste. Okay. Hmm. Indeed. Huh? What do you mean it's gone? Okay. What, what did you say? Come on. What? Hey! So somebody just up and took the fucking... his body? Yeah, it's gone. What the fuck? <laughs> who is doing this and who is... how are they not getting fucking caught? Right, let's see. Oh, I always hear. Indeed. Man, this person must have like stealth one hundred if they're able to like do like 
two murders and move one of the deceased bodies without getting detected. What, what did you say? Why? They put Hifumi in their inventory. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, you know, you know what they put there? In their hammer space. Thank you, I'll be here all week. I mean, they dropped their hammers. Where else would they put Hifumi? Like, they've got space for them now. No way! Anyways. No! Terrible joke. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, fuck. Yeah, that seems to be a, a bit of a lapse in judgment by all of us. Huh? Damn. <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> huh? Damn. Okay, so. <laughs> Rather than everybody rush this scene, why don't some of you stay here? Because I feel like we're dividing our attention and making it easier for the culprit to get stuff done. No, I guess we're all just gonna run to Wall Bear. Why not? I think she's still fine. I don't see any blood. Right away I noticed there was something very different here. Huh? Ah. So now both of the bodies are gone. This yeah. Is... That, yeah, I I I am surprised. Two murders in two moved bodies. Stop talking. <laughs> Not possible. So, we have several people here with alibis in the last, like, five minutes of what's been happening. So they're just... That just brings up the question who the guilty party may be, but there's not that many other people who could have done it. Well. Hmm. It is so. Hmm. Sorry I'm not physically reading out the dialogue right now, but I don't know if I want to do that at the moment. So I hope you guys don't mind me silently reading the dialogue for the most part. Maybe I'll do it here and there, but I'm just going to only sprinkle it. Hmm. Plus, i got to be honest, I feel like I take in, like I mentally take in dialogue more easily if I, you know, silently read it to myself, as opposed to, like, literally speaking the words out as I read it, because I feel like I find it harder to, like, take in certain information when I do that? I don't know, I'm weird. That's fine. Let's see. Yeah, we haven't seen the hero for a bit. Where the fuck did <laughs> he go? That's right. Oh shit. I'd mince ya! Mince ya without a second thought! Mince ya grind ya turn you into paste! I'll read his dialogue at least. By the way, did you know that fish paste can also refer to shellfish? Like shrimp or crabs? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> just comes along to say that and then just leaves. Let's see. 
perhaps. In other words. Yeah, we need to figure out where those bodies disappeared to. What? Hmm. So then... Here we go, investigation time. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. I don't know if I'm supposed to be in here right now. I should check I should check the map to see what's worth investigating, but yeah, no, this is the room I was gonna investigate. Noticing some, yeah, I'm noticing some drag marks there. Jeez, blood stains. Anyways, also that's another mystery we're gonna have to solve. What happened to Hammer Number Three? Justice Hammer Four. Is this all the work of that suspicious individual? What is that button? Let's me see everything. Okay. Wait. Mats? Oh, it's a tarp. I thought they were like gym mats. Oh, that's why you can investigate it. Okay. I love the, the music that plays when you're like exploring the you know the school. Probably nothing worthwhile checking here. How do I jump to them? Guys, how do you quick travel to a room again? I didn't see any buttons like prompting me to like jump to there, so I guess I'll just walk over there. You cannot during deadly life. Hmm. I guess we're just gonna look around till we can find them. Huh, wasn't that door open before? I have a feeling one of the bodies may be in there. Yeah, because I remember being in the in the the the, the storage room for the art class, but I can't seem to get in there now. I doubt it'll be in these two classrooms, but I might as well be thorough. Yeah, I had a feeling that was just for a coin. Hello, Celeste. Come on. Repository. Indeed. 
the repository is the room in like behind the art class, right? Goodbye. I don't know what the repository is again. Yeah, I'm getting more for the gacha, plus after the class trial I'll get even more. Hmm. Pretty obvious. Yeah, I called it. So I opened the door, and when I entered, I saw... Yep. Who moved them here, and how did they manage to do that without getting caught? The two bodies that disappeared were right here. The smell of blood made me gag. What I saw before my eyes was unquestionable, unvoidable, unwavering reality. And then, I heard the announcement for a second time. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! You know, I think I know why the announcement is playing again. It's because this is the first time the other of the two bodies was discovered by more than two people. Because there is a rule that at least three people need to discover one body before that announcement happens. So here we are! It's the Monokuma file! <laughs> I was going to hand them out when you found the bodies the first time, but I thought something might happen. What? It was really hard to resist, but turns out I was right! Stop talking. Just hand it over already. Punishment is waiting for you. Now make sure to investigate with all of your mental might and prepare for the class trial! See ya later! Who do you think did it? Too, way too soon to say. I think I need to investigate. Like, apparently Hero is the only one without the alibi, but that doesn't necessarily mean he did it. Who, who would do this? Why? Why? Nanny? What do you mean? She's alive again? Where am I? Cold. So cold. Is winter coming? Okay, so he's not dead, but I think he's on death's door, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, that's right. I remember now. Hope's Peak. Come on, you gotta wake up! I remember everything before I met you all. I met you all. <laughs> His memories are all blending together. He has nothing useful to offer to us. It's reaching out to me like the tail of a comet. Hey, Ifumi! Who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? 
That's right. I remember their name. Y Yasu. Yasu? Hero. What? So. Hmm. His eyes closed. And they never opened again. Yeah, he was pretty much on his way out, I had a feeling. Death for the second time. Absolute, undeniable death. Damn. No matter how many more Hina's tears splashed onto his face, there was no second miracle. Reality set in again. Hmm. This isn't some stereotypical fantasy world. Tears can't restore a person's vitality. Clearly you never watched Pokemon the first movie. Honestly. You have no tears, do you? No blood in your veins, no calcium in your bones. At least you have meat. <laughs> At least you have your meat. So <laughs> Sorry, the way she's saying this is weird. Stop talking. You're just angry. Going out of his way to return just to leave us with those unnecessary dying words. Now the game has become exceedingly boring. Huh. He said, Yes, a hero, right? Then perhaps. Yes, a hero, Hagakuri. That is the only person that he could have been referring to. So, in other words. And with that, the case is solved. Assaulting people and even killing Taka and Hifumi. <laughs> Hell, I'll kill him myself, bring him here. <laughs> And going as far as to hide their bodies. A criminal that hides his face behind a mask and uses a bunch of giant wooden hammers. Is that what Hero is? What is this? I haven't set up text to speech. Sorry about that. If it's true, I can't forgive him. No way can I ever forgive him. To kill two of our friends! That's fine. Anyway, it's about time we drag down the culprit in our little life or death game here. Although this time it's not all life or death. The trial will conclude with much tr without much trouble. Indeed. Yes, it does look that way. <laughs> oh no, anyways. It's going to begin again. We have to go through this one more time. I have to accept it. I have no choice but to go through with this, to make sure that everyone survives. I just have to do it! Alright, investigation time. I think now I can jump around. The victims were Hifumi Yamada and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of their death was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it? Very strange. Yeah, it's pretty strange. We got way less information this time than before. <sighs> that is no problem. After all, the events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened with the than the Monokuma file could anyway. Hmm. Maybe. Well, something else has been bothering me. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are you talking about Kyoko? Perhaps. Without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt, she has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? Yeah, that's right. They have been missing for a while. That is a bit suspicious. An accomplice? What are you doing here? Monokuma appears! Don't be rude! I'm here to answer your question! What question? Yep. You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I? During the first class trial! Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? 
So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Mm, yeah, that's a good point. In other words... So basically, you can have an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then... So you're saying nobody worked together this time either? Hey, um... Sorry, can't answer that. It would have struck the free exchange of information between you guys. I just want to make sure you don't forget no matter how much you might assist in the murder. Phew. Only one Blacken can graduate. An accomplice gets nothing! So in other words... Then we only need to figure out who the Blacken is and the, the, the killing, right? Just like normal? Well... Let me take this opportunity to clarify the whole shipping. In this class trial, what you need to determine is... Extreme! The one true Blacken who devised the murder plot and put it into action. The true Blacken? So just one person? Well now. That's enough for explainifying. Now it's time to get to the final battle between all of you and the Blackened. Good luck to all of the contestants! So there can only be one Blackened, an accomplice. An accomplice would not benefit. And I can't see any way that Kyoko would be connected to this case after all. Hmm. You may be right. Um... If that's true, then... Kyoko, where are you? However... As long as she's not connected to this case, it doesn't matter. Let's go back to the investigation. Indeed. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue further information. So, um... You know, don't, don't you think we should consider a certain person a suspect just in case? I'm talking about that murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. What? Ah, I'm offended! Oh. Yep, when did you? <laughs> I've been looking all over for you, Master! When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found! You SOB! Anyway, you there, milk... Milk sack swimmer girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Huh? Milk sack swimmer girl. That, that's a combination of words. Milk sack? You gotta be kidding! Why do I gotta be the suspect? What the heck? I mean, you are a serial killer. What? what? So what? I'm a special guest suspect every single time. I have an alibi, you know. Hmm. She is right about that. When we saw Hifumi scream, she was with me. And when the bodies disappeared, she was still lying unconscious in the equipment room. Plus Taka's body aside, I can't imagine any way she could have been able to move Hefumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they don't call me the murderous fiend for nothing. What are you saying? I feel like my voice for her is almost like a bootleg Monokuma voice. Like, I, I don't know how to differentiate the two. I'm just, I'm just doing like an insane voice. That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about. Let's see. On another topic, should we post guard by the bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. So then, Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Hmm. Sure. I'd totally be useless on the investigation anyway. It's all clear now. Then that's that. Let us begin. By the way, chat, I want to show you something. I want to show you something cool that was brought to my attention very recently. You want to see the most fucking weird thing that is, like, Monokuma related? Check this out. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? 
Okay, just for context, this is a real commercial in Japan. I have not watched the fucking translation for it yet. That was my first time looking at it as well. So let's just let's just unpack what we're seeing here. Wow, Ted is so sexy and hot. And yeah, you can kind of tell that they're thinking that just by looking at this. I wonder if he thinks I'm hot. Also, I, I love the touch of them just adding this fucking face at the end. This movie, really fucking funny. Thanks, <laughs> big fart line. <laughs> what do you mean? I can't wait to show this movie to my good friend Super Mario when I get into Super Smash But Okay, this must be a troll translation. I don't think this is real. I, I, I doubt they would have even met... I'm not even sure anymore. Chat, is this legit? Can anyone verify? If this is a real translation, because this almost seems like a shit post now. But yeah, basically just advertising Ted being released on DVD and Blu-ray in Japan, and you get Monokuma to like advertise it, which that's fucking genius considering his personality. Like that's that's actually a really clever way to market it in 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 the you know in the East. But yeah, that's a, that's a real commercial. Anyways, let's uh, let's continue. This whole thing's so straight. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Chat, how do I bring up the ch the, the dialogue? The whole thing is so strange. All of us has an alibi. Figuring out who that should be obvious, but. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna stop reading for now. I mean, you know what I mean, like physical reading. This hammer is all wet. Huh. Interesting. Uh, what else do we have in here? Oh yeah, we did see a bunch of tarps in the other room, so I guess that makes sense. Why Why would they need to emphasize... Dude, he's dead. You don't really need to point this out. Oh, I guess that's why they're pointing it out, because of the... How did they do it? from the nurse's office where he was discovered to here in the repository. Yeah, that, that is a good point, actually. How did they move them? Yeah, that's a, that's a mystery in of itself. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting that feeling? Something's different. Huh. Oh. That is, yeah, that's unusual. Wonder why they did that. Okay. Assuming that the killer somehow cleaned the glasses, but we don't know yet. Anyway, let, let me talk to you guys real quick. Hmm. So, in other words. Hmm.
what? Yeah, that is weird that they would take the extra effort and, you know, risk in order to do that. I see. He's doing a very Ace Attorney pose right now. Finger on glasses. That's enough. <laughs> Goodbye. Hmm. Okay then. Right, what about you, Sakura? So then. Mm. Ina, Kyoko, me, and you. Yeah, so Celeste was fortunate enough to avoid death during that. Hmm. And then this fucking happens. I'm going to assume the letter R and the letter J on this design is actually a localization edit. And I would assume that in the Japanese version of the game, it's like two kanji, like one on either side. Huh. Not that it has any bearing on solving the, the murder mystery, but you know, it's just an observation on my part. No, I know, the RJ stands for Robot Justice, that's not what I was pointing out. I was pointing out, I think that's, uh, you know what I mean. I'm just, I'm not gonna restate it. Who may get in the struck? I'm kind of baffled that whoever the mastermind behind these series of murders are was able to do all of this without getting caught for the most part. I say for the most part because you know there was someone who saw them quite early on, like Celeste. But after that, they basically gave everybody the runaround and did not get, like, caught whatsoever. And on top of that, as well as murdering two people, they somehow moved the bodies. Unless they did get an accomplice, However. which, again, why would they need accomplices if they don't get any benefits? Yeah, this is, this is weird. This is, a, this is, like, the weirdest case by far.
Yeah, I think the biggest mistake on our part as a group is that all of us ran to one spot instead of like some people being left behind to like guard certain bodies. Yeah, that was basically just a recap of everything so far. Thing I can search for now. Wait, did I search Toko's body? Or not Toko, sorry, Taka. Yeah, I think I did. Right. Okay, that seems to be valu valuable information. I should look around a bit more. Uh... Oh. I see something. Blood stains. Right, well, I think I know what this was used for. Let's have a look at the equipment room then. Yep. really all there is here? What's that? Oh, is that a monitor? Why? Wait, is that like one of the monitors on the wall? Because that is a fucking weird angle. It looks so fucking thin. The perspective on that is all out of whack. I don't think there's anything else I can check in here for now. We've not seen him for a while. Let's see. I think I already know how Hifumi's body was moved. Yes, indeed. Hmm. 
Indeed. Okay. Let me just see the specifics of that. So let's account. Ifumi's body disappeared when Celeste and AOA left the nurse's office to use the bathroom. Apparently they weren't gone for more than a minute or two. Again, monitor angle is fucking weird on that wall. That's not how perspective works. Bunch of blood packets in here for blood transfusions. <laughs> okay, so that was just a free coin. I think that's about everything I can think here. Also, I just noticed something. Why is there a drop shadow on Celeste? Like, there's no solid wall or object behind her. How is that happening? This game is weird. Do I have to talk to her again? Yes, indeed. Mm. Indeed. Yeah, no. What am I missing? Hang on. Oh, I guess I haven't looked at that yet. This normal trash can. There's something inside. The fuck? It's too sm small to be a handkerchief, it's a glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Covered in blood. Oh. Okay, that seems like a vital piece of evidence. that into my truth bullets. I think that's everything. Yep. Right, now where do I go? Right, seems like I can, I can investigate this place now. kind of mark tire tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There's blood on its tire. I don't know why I'm starting to read. Uh, I'm, I'm good on that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because he would have been on the first floor. How the fuck did they move him from there to the third floor? Thing. Yeah, that's up to thing.
I think there's still something in here I've not looked at. I mean... Okay then. Guess I just need to go around and talk to other people. Do I have to go back to the repository and look at the tarps again to confirm that that's where I saw it? I guess that's what I have to do. I don't need a recap. Uh, let's see. Where have I not been yet? I was just in the nurse's office, but... go back to the to the nurse's office. Chat, does anyone know the specific thing I have to in interact with in order to push forward? Because I feel like I'm missing one thing, but I don't know what that one thing is. Yeah, no, this is all the same. Uh, let me go investigate Hifumi's body again. Uh, wrong button. Because now that we've got the cleaning cloth, I think we should have a look at that body one more time. I'm a little bit stuck right now, and I'm not sure what I need to investigate next. Do I have to look at this again? Yeah, I checked this one already, it was wet. Looked at this already. idea. Wait, 
Wait. Oh. I thought I saw something there. My bad. Um. Let me. Let me walk from here. Hm. Oh, so I was supposed to go in the hallway, right? That's why nothing was happening. My bad. go to Hero's room. Meet in the dining hall. Okay. Hmm. It's all clear now. Interesting. Okay, let's go to the hero's room then. The door is unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Biakia said to go and look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the plunge. What is that on the wall? All kinds of weird stuff in here. Where did he get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? Okay then. Right, what do we wrong button? What do we have in here? Blueprint for something and Okay then, have the arms that bend like this. Why do I keep pressing that button? I think there's something off to the side there. Oh no, that's the door from behind the wall. Now yeah, let me check the bathroom. How does that bathroom even get this dirty? Uh, anything on the bed? Everything in the room. Wait, no, there's something on the table. Wait, no. Why did the cursor go there? Chat. Okay, chat. You tell me, does it look like the cursor is pointing at the table and not the fucking door in the background? Because that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else in here. Let's get out of here. We found Kyoko. There's more big news. Robo Justice showed up too. Oh. Hmm. It's Hero wearing the costume. Okay. Head to the pool on the second floor. Okay then. Let's go have a look then. <laughs> They're all just way in the backgrounds. Uh, 
I mean... Phew, man, I just had the worst day. Hero? Yeah, apparently that's that's hero. Hmm. I am positive that the suspicious individ that is the suspicious individual that attacked me. Hmm. Apparently that ridiculous object is hero. I'd ask Kyoko for the details if I were you. Right. I found hero. He was jammed into the pool room locker. Looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me. You could have been a little more gentle about it, like when I... Like, I don't know, caress my face or something. What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never minds. I can't never mind. It's nothing. Never minds. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people she might be spying? Does she does she know that people think she might be spying for the mastermind? And first of all, Hiro, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean Oh uh well, I mean I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened, and then when I woke up, I was in here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me to look at you. Huh? Well, um... Let me out of here! I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? <laughs> Why would you make something like that you can't take it? Why would you make something like that, which you cannot take off yourself? You got it all wrong! I didn't make this stupid friggin' thing! It would seem... There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. Took a few minutes, but eventually we all got the pieces off. <laughs> Woo! Free at last! Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly this suit fits Hiro Hero? So then... And more to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious that everyone it's obvious to everyone that you made this costume. Hmm. That's true, I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be Yeah, I think he's being framed. This seems way too convenient. Then it's obvious. The one who put the costume on went around attacking everyone. That's terrible! Was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea. We wouldn't want him killing anyone else. What? Tie me up! Hold on, guys. I think that's gone a little too far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed him! Please. Them! What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero. A fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the one who can wear this costume. Who else could it possibly be as the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself if you, before you convict me. Okay. If you're going to be a jerk about it, then fine, I will. Without missing a beat, Hina stopped putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh. See, <laughs> look. See how loose it is? That is a very silly picture. I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm 
I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Oh. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... No, let's see, it's it's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Wait, me? Fine. Against my will, <laughs> I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. Poor Makoto. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second. See? I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you were absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But... Th then there's another costume. They must have had one that looked exactly the same, but, but it fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? You claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <gasps> what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. That's terrible! Which is how we know it with him. What? Is that really true? I have no idea what's happening, man. Can someone, like, tell me? Robo Justice costume has been added to the truth bullets. Okay. What the heck? If you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey Makoto, who was it? Well... Two people were killed, Taka and Hifumi. What? 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 Two people?! Just the worst! Why are you freaking out? You did it! Please. I did not! Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it! I know who did it! So then... You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right! <laughs> that fucking voice clip. Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it! Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. Please! Unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so then... Ah, uh, I know. The note. Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Morokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. But the last thing I can remember was going to the rec room, and then for some reason I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me, or, dragged me, or something. Drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So. No, hold on. He could be on to something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? But really? I told you, somebody's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape. Someone wrote that and tricked me. <sighs> Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every last piece of that bait that floats in front of you. <sighs> well, after being trapped here for so long, even you know it's a lie, so you gotta check, right? Yeah! They preyed on my desire to get out of here and they deceived me! I still don't buy it. Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it. Just a second! Okay, then show us the notes. Hmm. With pleasure. It's here in my, um, pocket. No way. Looks like I lost it. <sighs> yeah, sure. Please! You gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. 
As I said before, if you want to if you want us to believe you, you must provide evidence. Can you show us the notes? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, then give us a reason. Uh, for serious? Alright. What was she doing this whole time? Why is that? Okay, you're being extremely suspicious right now. Anyway, shall we go? Okay then, sure. Hey. Oh, we're gonna examine the corpses. Correct. Hey. Anyway. The repository, right. Weird. She crouched down next to, next to Taka without hesitation, and began poking and prodding at the bodies. I knew it. Right, let's have a look at uh, Taka's body first. Six o'clock. That's right. In other words. Okay then. However, he appears to be gripping something. How did nobody notice that until now? Makoto. Because. Mortis. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hands. 
the ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from this tightly clenched fist. Piece of paper? Hey. Huh. Is that right? So then. A piece of paper, right. Do I have to like talk to her to investigate his body? Indeed. A wad of paper. That's right. Indeed. Why is that? Oh, uh, okay then. Hey. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6am. Yeah, that that is pretty much what he said that he was given. AM. There's a discrepancy here. Is that right? Hmm. So Hey. Okay then. The two victims this time definitely had their e-books on them. E-handbooks. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the models were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think that they were connected to the killings in the first place. Is that right? There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. I had that effect ready for a while. I, I, I prepped that like effect like almost two weeks ago and I was going to save it for next time I streamed this game and like got to the class trial. <laughs> so I didn't get to use that sooner. But yeah, it's time. We're going to do it. Get rid of the... Uh, get rid of that. Oops. 
but yeah, Brothership comes out in a few days. I'm going to try and get it day one. Everyone had held Monokuma's proclamation and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma what? Appears! Two Monokuma. Wrong. Not multiplication. It looks like that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast that it only looks like I've multiplied. He's doing a Dragon Ball Z technique. Or he's doing double team from Pokemon. Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, tough crowd. You're not playing along, along, along. Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. <laughs> hey, hey! If everyone's here, ready to go, please board the pain train, uh, the elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? Please. Hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it. For serious? Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find that other costume or the knot? <sighs> well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate. It would seem that we have our culprit. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first and then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to... I have to... do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here. Damn. I don't like Minokuma's carefree attitude. Just the worst. Let's hurry up and go. We can make Hero pay for this for his crimes. Hmm. Were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. It would appear the culprit has been confirmed. The trial will be over in no time. Hey. The story begins when we get down there. Mm, yes, yes. Come on, Big Mac, let's do it! <sighs> uh, it wasn't me, you gotta believe me! took one last deep breath, and it exhaled slowly. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard... The doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all of this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator had finally come to a stop. The elevator door slid open. Opening up to a cruel fate. Oh, the room looks a bit different now. Hmm, I see all of you have gathered together like this! I realise just how few of you there are all left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just the worst. Only because of you. <sighs> Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What what? What what? You really hate me so much, but I'm so cute. Come on. 
to stop goofing around and begin the trial. Don't rush me. Of course I'm gonna start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break. Stay tuned for this action-packed climax after the commercial break. And now we return! And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgement, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defence, a deadly faith. A deadly class trial. Right, let's see what I can do. Lost in thought. Do I have this equipped already, or...? Oh, I guess the the blue ones are equipped. Focus gauge recovers more quickly. Effective during the non-stop debate, the hangman's gambit, and the bullet time. Cost 4 SP. Right, well, since I've got room for it, I may as well just equip that. Yeah, there we go. Now I've got everything equipped. Let me just have one more look at the court record. I mean, truth bullets. Lock door. Can, there's only a lock on the inside, so that's something I'll have to remember. Jeez, blood stains. Glasses cleaning cloth was in the trash. Ifumi's body disappeared when Celeste and AOA left the nurse's office to use the bathroom. Apparently, they weren't gone for more than a minute or two. Right. Again, I'm just taking this in before we start, because I'm going to have to remember a lot of things. Anyone wearing it would not be able to see their feet or bend at the waist more than 90 degrees. Trial. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with... We already know who did it! Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place. Alibi. I, that I like the way she said that. Don't try and deny it! You killed them! I didn't! Someone knocked me out! I, I was asleep the whole time! I don't know anything about it! Shut your murdering mouth! 
Oh, I'm calling the kettle Why black. Are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Which button files the truth? Bullet again, is it X or Y or what? Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! No. Oh, right, you have Everything to have the yellow pulse, right? The, the blueprints, the suit cards, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Oh. What was the speed up button? B to fast forward. Hero, why? Where did go? Just hold on a second! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit that you are. The... Okay, one it's second. I think I know which one to go for. Just hold on a second. Everything we found in your room. Ah. Shoot. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit cards, they are all proof enough <laughs> that you are the culprit. I'm off that bad star. No! Just hold on a second! Everything we found in the blueprints, the suit cards, they are all proof enough. There we go. No, it's wrong! Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints... There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro's innocent as well. What? Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. <laughs> of course. So, who was in the I mean, there's not that many options I could pick from. The Illuminati! <laughs> uh... Shoot! Wait a minute. Oh. Uh... But wait a minute. Can't be the middle option. That that's a joke answer, surely. What? I got it. So wait, Hero wore the costume. I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously he was the one in that particular suit. 
and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Where was it? Did I pass it already? I think I did. Wait a minute. There's still one more thing. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was like one or the other, but it actually is both. I got it. They were a dolly and a tarp, right? What's with that attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Papa's body disappeared from the equipment room, and then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. I mean, if they had premeditated the murder and got them to go to that place, is it not possible that it was in the repository all along, and you simply didn't realize it? Hmm. She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. This game knows me more than I know myself. <laughs> new element has been added to the bullet time battles. Let's talk about reloading. Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're going to add one more ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you will see your ammo count. Up until now, there's not really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, you're going to have to be pressing the X just locking on and pressing the X button will not be enough to handle them. It will now cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can destroy 
you cannot destroy more statements no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the Y button. Oh god. Right, okay, so... Shoot. Lock on fire, shoot. Wait. Lock on shoot, reload, lock on shoot, reload. So basically I've got to do A, X, Y, A, X, Y, A, X, Y. Is what I think they're saying. You will automatically reload for the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. Oh wait, I've got more than one bullet to reload. Okay, so I'll pay attention to the count wherever the fuck it is on the screen and I'll reload when I need to. All right, here we go. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Do your worst. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Life will get you nowhere. I cannot agree. This should prove it. There we go. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. Jeez, blood stains. Okay, I'll stop making that reference. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire marking that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident, and as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo-Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. <laughs> I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. I think I might know where he's going with this. Right, let's see, where are my truth bullets this time? Just one, Robo Justice costume. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? There's a lot of statements yeah, on this one. The culprit wrapped the body in the car. Then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. What you cannot do in that costume. No, You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together, remember? I'm as blind as a bat in here. I can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? 
You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? Nope, that would have been impossible. I got it! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can actually seem to get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make this stupid freaking thing! There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy, and I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Of course I wasn't making it up! If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So... It's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? How did you get hurt? The guy hit me! What guy? Robo Justice! Uh, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. Hold on a second! But it's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right then. Let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up. So we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. Hmm. 
And when Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. And then... At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office, while Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository, which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. Let's do a quick save here. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find him no matter what. Alright, here we go. Time for another argument to be made. Monokuma file number three. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the justice hammers. Yeah. Shoot. Oopsie. So, regarding Taka's death. I wonder if he or perhaps it was us. We already know Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3. While Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, forgot I wonder if he died or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. No. Wait, am I doing something wrong? 
Is there... So, regarding Taka's death... Wait, isn't there a thing, a mechanic I'm missing? You can change bullets. I only have the one bullet, do I not? Wait, do I? Hold on. Uh... And are you still there? I might need some help on this. I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Let me look at the controls one more time. Concentrate. Oh. L button. I'm or pressing it. it was after. Hang on a second. Yeah, I'm gonna have the one truth bullet. We already know what order they were killed in. Let me just review the controls one more time. You can take statements and make them bullets. Whip button here does that again. Sorry, I didn't remember this. Old X. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3. I While don't Taka's know... death came from a swing of mm. Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. Okay, hang on a second, hold up. So, regarding Taka, I wonder if he's or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers! There. No, it's wrong! I wasn't sure if it was the first statement against the second, or the second statement against There's the first. No reason to assume that the I just took a bit of a guess there, the honestly. As their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Oh, I know what the proof is. Hangman's Gambit. Let me see what this is again. Okay. Oops. Law. Come on, where's the H? Now I understand. I've got it. Taka's wristwatch. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. If it wasn't broken after six last night, then he must have been attacked around six this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around seven. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, 
we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder, but all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office. And that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. <laughs> don't just go making stuff up! Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That is something that's been on my mind for a good while now. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. Oh! Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The, the dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another... Goat! <laughs> God damn it, Hiro. Also, yeah, I did not even consider the fact, you know, because he was still technically alive. Maybe he was walking around in a stupor after taking a blow to the head and just wound up being in that room when we discovered him. I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Ifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Ifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead! Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. Right, I'm gonna have to not make any more mistakes. I don't have that much health left. Broken wristwatch. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, 
there's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hikumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. No, it's right, I'm glad I got that one correct. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. Nope. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. I did not think that one through. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. It didn't seem weird at the time. But it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. 
Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. I think I know what it is. I think I might know something that would show that. Ifumi's glasses. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared! Yeah. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Okay, I think that then, might be the statement. Was he really still alive? Of course not. It is impossible. This is ridiculous. Well, here's one thing. The first time we found Hikumi's and then from his body disappeared. And the next time we it was in the room. But when you compare his body before being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Oh, I just got it. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office and the repository. I'm gonna make a safety save here. Because I've got a very low amount of health right now, so I'm trying to like maintain. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. I got it! All right, back up to two. glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Mifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to Hifumi. Mmm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. But it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna huh. play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! God, what an idiot! And if Kifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse.
I am not entirely sure I'm gonna get this wrong, aren't I? I was thinking something happened with him as well, to that degree, but no. Right, listen. I may have to load up my save file again later. Because I am doing fucking horrendous today. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well... After the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Kifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I, I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. Oh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Oh, right, that. about the notes Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden notes? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Yes, his pants. <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that, Sakura? Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. Ah, that's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hiro, and that person could only have been... <laughs> Fumi's pants. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to dry out Taka and murder him. Wrong button. Just gonna make an all save since I've recovered a bit of health. Much needed. I've been kind of struggling with getting the right answers on this one, hence why I was down to like one heart for a bit. Hello, over here. Objection. Object. I don't really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok. They were drawing out Happy. Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Happy is Kifumi, right? Oh, yes. Why must you ruin it every time? Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still. I can't let her get to me. Oh, we got a few things. I'm not shooting that anymore. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 
6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! But remember what the note says. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m., I believe. I am not entirely sure what to do here. I'm thinking. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. Okay. The time doesn't matter. One moment. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. I I don't know what the answer to this one is. I'm trying to figure that out. Remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? Hmm. I I'm I'm a bit stuck here. I'm I'm trying to think this one, but I I, I I I'm struggling a bit. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. I'm gonna be hearing this quite a few times, chat. I'm sorry. Okay, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. I think I know now. But remember what the note said. What time did Let me go back around again? I think I know what's going on. No. Did I have the... Wait. What bullet did I just fire? Was it the wristwatch? Yeah. The note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been happy. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. I believe. Okay, wait a minute. I'm I'm dumb. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Yeah. yeah, let's waste another minute, why don't we? Let's wa waste like 10 million minutes. I am so fucking dumb today. Could have easily figured that out had I used more than two brain cells. absolutely is a connection. What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, 
What was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed out his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Okay, this one's pretty obvious. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Why didn't you check this before we went into the class trial room? From Taka's scrap? Yup. They're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact... Wait a minute. The handwriting, that's also in the blueprints, isn't it? He was behind the whole thing! In fact, he's still alive! I don't think he's alive, dude. Wait, is he? Or... Sorry, no. No, because we discovered the two dead bodies. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Let me... pick that in again. Yeah, so any, I guess any one of us could have done that, maybe. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus. Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah, because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file... The way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. I think I might know what what the next thing's going to be. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is... How could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? I don't think it was either of them. Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi?
I'm gonna make a quick save here. I'm just gonna save semi frequently just so that I, you know, don't lose too much progress. I think I might know where the next logical step in this is. Spotless hammer, right, I thought so. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Huh? Well, one thing what? seems pretty clear. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm sorry to pause the game, but I have to check now if this is real. Uh... It's loading, apparently. Is it going to lead anywhere? There is a website called Murder Gear. Zombie Murder Gear. Wait, is this? With the contact information? Customer service, the infected. I don't... Um... I don't think... Th this may be an actual commercial website where you can buy stuff. Because I don't think this is part of, like, you know, a, a silly, you know, stunt, publicity stunt for, like, this game. Where it's like, haha, here's a fake website. This this looks legit. Basically just buying t-shirts with, like, weird zombie logos and shit. But, um, I'm, I'm gonna show you, hang on, let me take a screenshot. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. One second, just getting the the picture in question. Wait, hang on. What? Okay, here we go. This is what I'm looking at, chat. This is the website. Let me click on the first product, the zombie, the outbreak. Sold out. Okay, then. Unless this is just a really elaborate thing, sold out. Okay, this th the third product is on sale. No, it's not. As soon as I click it, it says sold out. Maybe it is just an elaborate hoax then. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused by this one. But there's like a view car and checkout button, so I'm inclined to believe this is a real shopping website. I really don't know. It's like a contact thing where you can basically send them an email or whatever. Uh, I don't want to do that. Let's see. Music? No. Um, none of this stuff appears to be on sale anymore. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything here. Okay, here's what I think happened. I think the URL was just completely made up. But somebody decided to take it and redirect it to this URL. Which is where I'm at right now. Murdergear.bigcartel.com <laughs> Okay. <coughs> I'm fine. Very confused by that, but okay. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! And, uh, that's about it. What was used to kill Hifumi? Blippigabobo! Jumped the gun on that one just a little bit. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Got moved. Maybe Justice Hammer. Well, whatever it is, one thing. How was the culprit able to move or how did nobody witness them carrying it? Okay, I fucked up. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Shoot. Yeah. 
Like, I know, I know what the logic is, I just don't know exactly what the answer is, is the problem. And I'm too fucking stupid to remember, or figure out. But you know what, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna bother reading this out loud, I don't give a shit. The one with the most votes is Makoto, what do you mean? I had nothing to do with this, I had an alibi. That would make sense for the first case, not so much the third case. Is... is this really the end for all of us? I refuse to give up yet! Oh, I get another... I get another try, okay. Chat, what do the five stars mean again? Your focus gauge. All oh, right, that's a thing. What was used to was it justice? Maybe justice at well. What if there's one? How was the culprit? How did nobody witness them? Kip? Sounds like a justice hammer five is about to make its appearance. Check out MurderGear.com/slash/hammertime for more info. Shoot. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it justice hammer three? Maybe Justice Ham. Well, what if there's one? How was the culprit able to move around? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! And, uh, that's about it. Hmm. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer? Maybe Justice Hammer? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing. How was the culprit able to move? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, what the murder weapon had to be one of the- And, uh, that's about it. No. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to tell with the culprit. Wait. Able to tell know that he Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make it a check out murdergear.com. Well, once the murder weapon had to Gonna try something. Uh, that's about it. What was used to kill Hifumi? Blah. Shoot! What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one, how was the culprit able to move around so freely with the what? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com! Well, what? The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! And, uh, that's about it. Like, here's the thing. I think they were murdered with one of the hammers in the repository like the spotless hammer at least I think um, um, I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm supposed to point out here so I'm, I'm gonna be struggling for a few minutes what was used to kill Ifumi? Was it Justice Hammer or maybe Justice Hammer? Well, whatever one of the how was the culprit? It how did nobody reach? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! No, it's not five. Okay, hang on. What the murder weapon had to be one of the just and uh that's about it. Did I use Justice Hammer on the uh, I think I did. What was used to kill it? Was it just maybe Justice Well, but there's one thing. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the how did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to 
like a justice hammer five is about to make its appearance. Check out murder gear. Well, what the murder weapon and uh, I'm just gonna be clutching at straws for the next couple minutes. I'm just gonna make guesses because I am not sure exactly what the answer is. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the how did nobody witness them carrying it? Nah, I didn't think so. Yeah. I'm too stupid. Is there something with Spotless Hammer I haven't used yet? Nah, I didn't think so. Bye. Is this Spotless Hammer on Justice Hammer 5? Nah. It's the hero statement. I refuse to give up yet. You know, I'm surprised there's not a game over thing here. It's just like, oh, he'll fight more hearts if you say yes. I thought we were all going to get more than fucking, you know, a bloody orgy, but I guess that's fine that we don't. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer. Well, what if there's one? How was the culprit? It how did nobody Wait, you spot was Hammer on like Justice Hammer on the Hero Statement? Check out murdergear.com slash hammer But shut up. Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the justice. Oh my god. I tried literally almost everything except for that. I don't know why. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of brick and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? I mean, if it's Hifumi, then I think he just did it because he's a simp. Which means the person he was working with was probably one of the girls that he was, you know, crazy about. So that would, you know, massively narrow down the suspects. Spotless hammer again? Okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one person, only the one who actually carried out the act can be assuming the rule holds true. It is simply impossible that two people work together on this. 
That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Shit. Shoot. Based on the rules, even if more than one hurt, only the one who actually can assuming the rule holds true. That is how the But that only really applies. In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one person is for only the one who actually carried out the act can win. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work what? together on this. Okay. I'm just kind of guessing at this point because I really don't know. Based on the rules that have even if more than one person, only the one who actually carried assuming the rule holds true. It is simply impossible that two people work together. There's only two statements. That only really applies if in this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out, even if more than one person, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate, assuming the rule holds true. It is simply impossible that two people what? work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. I wasted but the two murders, really but what do you mean? There's one murder. In this case, however, there were two murders. Based what did I miss the first time? Even if more than one person is complete, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate, assuming the rule holds true. God damn it! I I know. Hang on. As soon as the game lets me Since pause. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. Sorry, I just don't want music and shit playing while I'm trying to explain myself. I didn't realize like. Yes, I realized that I missed the first time, but I thought I still had said bullet, like I still had that one. But no, if you miss, it goes back to your default spotless hammer bullet. I did not realize that the first time. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I genuinely did not know that was how that worked. Again, stupid. I'm a, I'm a bit of a dumb streamer, you know that? What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hibumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime, and based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That, that's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. Hmm. I think I might know who the, the, the mastermind is. I am 
understand how an accomplice could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! I'm thinking it could be one of two people, but I think I know who it is. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna go with my other guest then. The only reason I went with her first is because, you know, there was a couple moments where she was gone missing for a while. And I was like, okay, can you tell me where you disappeared to after this case is over? And she's like, no. So I was like, yeah, that's kind of suspicious. Where? Here's my answer. That was my other guess. Again, the whole it, the whole simp angle kind of made me think about that. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying then is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain fat, lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Whoa. Uh, 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 -moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you are working together. Shoot! they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. God damn. What is wrong with you? Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? You know, now that I'm beginning to think a bit more about this, the fact that we all had this like complete runaround, like going up and down the floors trying to look for the dead bodies or the, the murderer. Celeste was basically orchestrating all of that because she's like, oh, I saw somebody up on the third floor! and made us all go up there. After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? Yeah, there you go, right. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It 
was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I, I don't believe it. Everything, the whole thing was one big act. Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Yeah, that makes sense. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. Like those guys that... I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? All right, I think we're getting close to the end of the case. Monokuma file number three. All I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys die. Blue. Hang on. All you said was, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be perfect. We are all going to die. We are going to die, just like those guys die. And that is all I said. 
and that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Okay. All you said, we must really be enjoying the side right, of I think I know what I'm supposed to do. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all. And that's all it takes to finish this. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? No. Ah. Uh. Shoot. God, today has not been my day in terms of like making smooth progress with the class trial. All I said was they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Give it up. All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. Step in must be positive. We are all going to die. We are going to die. And that is all I think and I know what to do. It takes to finish. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Maybe I have to use that one on the other statement. I think I used it backwards. The side of us standing around. They must be positively late. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys. No, it's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. Right, before we continue, I just have to reiterate something here, or just, like, clarify something. I knew that that was the particular logic, I just didn't know which answer went into which thing to do it. I did it backwards, and this game is kind of weird in how it handles that, because it's like, you know, I could have taken the those guys and put it into that strange, and, you know... The, the the two kind of go together, but it's backwards, but it still doesn't work. I, I don't know. It's fucking weird. I feel, I feel stupid for not figuring this out in hindsight, but I understand now. It's... Nah. Yeah, you know what? We could just stop with me coming up with excuses, and we, we all know that I'm just stupid, right? When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Again, tonight has not been my night in terms of, like, doing this smoothly. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead, too. You all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then... Then she used the camera's timer to... to... set up the picture! Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit! Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Sh 
Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered us. No, there is no other explanation. <laughs> They're dancing. <laughs> They've been drinking. I got it. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Yeah, she's been defensive now. Oh, we got three bullets this time. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all! No way! You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out! Then you just drank it. you tried to make me look like- Like I said, as you can see in the picture, the if the person inside the suit, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Okay, that one was no, pretty obvious. Yeah. Again, cannot bend at the waist, so they have to be upright regardless. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Ooh, different picture this time. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you oh, mean, Jesus. checkmate? Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? But you weren't in the room when he said that. In other words, Yasuhiro Hakakurei! 
How would you know that, though? You would only know that because you instructed him to lie. Right, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. <laughs> Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? He gave everyone nicknames. He said people's last names. Wait, how did, they, how did he address us again? I'm trying to remember. I think he used everybody's last names. I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. Oh yeah, that's right. He did say that a lot, didn't he? So if Kafumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random God damn it. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to. And that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Ah, huh, that's right. <sighs> what did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? So, make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! Oh, boy. My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Okay, time for the gun thing, I think. Oh no, it's, it's back to this again? Kafumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! Why is it upside down? How long do you plan to go on pretending? I love opening the mask like yells at people. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me, that's the only truth there is! Moron! Okay, I think I know what to do. Kifumi was trying to He wanted us to know the killer's life. If there's one person here... It would have to be you, Celeste. How many times have I? Me. Celeste, you're looting for God! How long do you plan? I'm not pretending. And since you have no way to contradict uh, me... Ah, fucking hell. That's the only thing yeah! I should have known Kifumi those things were going to pop up to block that to shot. If there's one person here... It would have to be you, Celeste. How long do you plan? I'm not pretending. And since you have no way to contradict me. There. No, it's wrong. Right, I think we've got our corn up now. 
That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! because! Oh boy, here comes the breakdown. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. I haven't saved in a while, so I might as well do that now. Right, I think we've reached the finale. And that'll bring everything to an end. <laughs> that fucking picture. <laughs> this image of his face. Wait, why is that poster from the previous trial here? That doesn't belong in this case. the thing that shows me like a clue Did I have to click on it was it seduction hmm let me think about this oh so the crystal ball again that's from a previous case That's it. Right, let's go to the next one. sense of this one. Hang on. Can I remove that? Oh, it's the time. Okay. Right, and then they, they basically use chemicals to make them pass out and then they put them inside the costume.
Oh god, look at that picture up in the top left corner. He attempts to swing at him. And he manages to strike, apparently. What number was it? Okay, so it's either four or three. I think it was three. In the library, Hifumi used something to fake the existence of a shadowy criminal. So there. Which Justice Hammer was in the nurse's office when Hufumi is pretending to be dead? I think it was four. That's a pretty good two page spread there of just like everything that's going on there. Also, I love how the murderer is just like, you know, in like that, like your character here sort of thing but they're reacting as if they're a part of the crowd. Right, and then this is where he tries to move the body. The dolly. <laughs> oh my god, that top right picture. Yeah, he, he's definitely a simp to the end. He only did it to please his master, regardless of consequence. And finally, that. The killer is you. I may have gotten one of them wrong, but I think Before I got everything I, else right. The killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder, and that person was. Ifumi, with an accomplice. The killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. Oh that God! Someone they met with was Hero. That picture of him there in the corner. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him... And then this is where they staged the picture. Him, ...knocked him out, and stuffed him into the robo-justice suit. Next, he fully positioned himself to make it look like robo-justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. Yep, there's that face. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. 
I feel bad for Taka. Just when he finally unlocked his Super Saiyan form. Ah, fuck. I got the hammer wrong. I knew it. Right, so if that's the case... I think I got them mixed up. And this one goes here. Here's exactly what happened. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, Next, they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack store. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds, that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that, but... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. We took a blood packet from the refrigerator <laughs> and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back, and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office, and once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. So far, so good. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Yep. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Here we go. I lost. When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. I do like those bits where you put the comic things together to like figure out the sequence of events. It's like one of my favorite parts about the game, honestly. Then you admit it? You're the killer? Hm. Listen to you trying to take charge. 
as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. N Nani? Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Right, well, I think I did all right. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes. I got a couple quote-unquote game overs, but, um, eh, you know, I got through it. Still got an A rank for some reason. I feel like that's very generous by this game's standards, but thank you. Right. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no. I suppose this is the end, isn't it? It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote, okay? Oh, if you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. Oh, my controller disconnected. Hang on. Why did it do that? Uh, I think my controller ran out of battery charge. Hang on. Let me plug in the USB. Yeah, I, th I think it ran out of juice. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Monokuma vote time. a formality at this point, but once again, you are totally correct! <laughs> the black and this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was... Ta-da! Celestia Ludenberg! Or more precisely, Taiko Yoshihiro! Honestly... I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. Ifumi's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. I knew it. So you really did approach Ifumi with this plan. How did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would be happily agreeing to committing murder. Hm. I'm sure she relied on her specialty, lying. <laughs> my specialty? Don't make me laugh. I don't even have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use, you know. <sighs> I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice. Mm -hmm. I used her. For everyone who's still left, I'd avoid mentioning it by name, but. It was the one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does she mean... Is she talking about Alter Ego? Say what? 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 What are you talking about? Oh right, he doesn't know. Just a second. Does he know? Does he not know, chat? Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. I'm totally out of the loop as usual. How sad! In other words... Then you're the one who stole it? Indeed. That's right. I see. And you used it to drag Hifumi into the planet you'd come up with. <laughs> right again. Last night after we had our meeting about how it disappeared, I paid Hifumi a little visit. Um... So yeah, motivation had absolutely nothing to do with the, the one million dollars. It was basically all about Chihiro or Alter Ego. Um, 
What are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you, alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. <laughs> so then... And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I found a use for the digital camera. It taken you know what to Taka's room earlier and took pictures of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I'd shown it to Hifumi, of course. Damnation! So it was him! But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us got close to her! <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? As for me... Please forgive me. He... He threatened me. Oh. Um... He, he did? As for me... He came to my room last night unannounced and then... It's hard for me to even say. He... Abused me. What? And he... He took pictures. He said that if I did not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. I... I had no choice. Damnation! That's a crime! An absolute crime! He... I mean... I know he's gone in a little crazy, but... Say what? I never imagined he would go that far! <laughs> it was amazing how completely he got bought into it. <laughs> I can't express how enjoyable that was. <laughs> I'm about to say something that I've never said before in my life! Completely unforgivable! I'm... I'm going to kill him! I'm going to fucking kill him! Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you will be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Huh? Actually... Taka is planning to use her to escape. And he has made you his target. What? Escape! What, what do you mean? <sighs> Taka is going to try to kill you. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed? And all he... And, and also he can keep her to himself. <sighs> this is unforgivable! That bastard! Completely unforgivable! Honestly. Can we allow him to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not! How could I? She... she... I swear I will save her! <laughs> Actually... Then, would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. Huh? huh? I have devised a way to reclaim what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> and with that, it is complete. Hmm? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> Ifumi agreed without a second thought. Hmm. The effect that item had on, on him was rather remarkable. The power of love. Even a love as twisted as that can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um... You disgust me! I see. I have another question for you. What was that strange costume that he... Was that strange costume Hifumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah. It was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he would make something like that. But it's my fault for picking him in the first place. But... So, uh, why did you decide to make me the suspect? <sighs> because you're stupid. <laughs> That's it! At least she's honest about it. Let's see. And in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stupidity surpassed even my ex every expectation. Oof. Life must have been tough on your parents, though. Oof! I feel like I could cry, man. Well. 
But when you were explaining your plan to Hifumi, how did you explain to the part about him playing dead? <laughs> what she is asking is when Hifumi was supposed to... What he was supposed to do after that, assuming you'd actually let him live. Are you okay with this? That is simple. After he did his part pretending to be dead once, someone showed up. I told him to say that he'd been seriously wounded and he was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. Hmm. And he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained it to Hifumi, the plan was... While we were all questioning about what, he, what had happened to him, I was going to murder somebody else. At that point, Hifumi would have had an alibi, so no... So nobody could have doubted him. I told him that, and he believed it. Hmm. It all seems very straightforward. Stereotypical. <laughs> I just matched a lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it all up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you had planned to kill him all along? <laughs> But of course! There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can human, how can human life mean so little to you? Well... That is a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Byakuya! I wonder about that. No, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then why did you made it? Why did you? Then what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Hmm. Are you talking about the ten million dollars that Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money. It's true. <sighs> but that is not all there is to it. From the moment our new life here had began, my only thought had been to escape. But... But all along you've been saying how we have to accept living here. You little bitch! Obviously that was a lie! <laughs> hey! I couldn't take it! I hated it from day one! More than anyone, anyone, anyone else in here! You little bitch! <laughs> I like that voice clip. I wanted to get out. Every day was fresh torture. And you want to know why, huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. And there was no way I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical killing. As for me... And it was all for that dream. And that dream of yours... Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. A castle? <laughs> and to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butler slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Okay then. Once I obtained that, I would have created perfect the perfect aesthetic. Uh. Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. So that was her motivation to begin with. Just some fucking self-indulgent like fetish or something. Okay. <laughs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's ten million dollars would have made that dream a, real a reality. Okay, so the money was, you know, the the main driver behind this. I got right to the edge, but there is nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream to the very end, so why would I? Just the worst. You sound so passionate, but. You were really able to you were really able to kill your own friends for it? Oh. 
Are you asking me to feel guilty? That is a pointless endeavor. I think of nothing sacrificing for... Uh, I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? That's what we should be seeing. And plus... How can you be so calm? Don't you realize that you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? <laughs> My ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people. I can't even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. And that's why you're not scared. Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I had a choice, then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would like to come back as Mary Antoinette. Hey. You'd just get excluded again. Executed again. <laughs> so let's smile then. And when she did, it looked like to me like a poor effort to force it. She claimed she could fool her own feelings. But that statement itself must have been her real final lie. And that weak, fake smile is what betrayed her. Thrills, chills, kills! Are you all done? Okay then, let's get rolling! The Black Hand distributed the pi disturbed the peace, and thus must pay the price! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! The Ultimate Gambler! Sorry, I, I I felt like it was worth one more. Anyways. I guess I'll let you on <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop for real this time. I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? Room key. Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why actually, it's not important. Well then. Take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. The ultimate gambler, you see? Right, let's see what, what's going to happen. Fucking Atari ass sound effects. The burning- oh no! Oh boy. <laughs> really? This is how she's gonna go out for her crimes. Yep. I love the stylistic flames. What the? Fire truck? Wait, what do you mean fire truck? Oh! Okay. <laughs> yay, we put the fire out. We may have also put out a life, but yay. <laughs> oh, I, lo I love how fucking dark and twisted this game is.
It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but... I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend too. And for him to just come along and... Isn't it just awful? Someone couldn't cut free from the regret from the outside world, and so more people had to die. Extreme! You guys are still so young! You need to place more value on your lives! What are you gonna do? Jeez, and here I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation. Let me out of here! What do I care about your hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you let me out of here. Too bad. You're all the embodiment of hope whether you like it or not. And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one. It's sad, yes it is, but that reality can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. Oh wait, that's me. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep on going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it the rest already. Hmm. Anyways. Kyoko, did you get some kind of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey! What's the deal with that? Wah -wah? What's the matter? So then. I'll answer your question if you'll answer mine. You. What did you do? What did you do to me? Who? What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? L your body? Ooh, how oh. exciting. Oh, oh man, oh jeez. Oh jeez. What do you mean, what did I do? I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Um... What was that just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that even mean? Hello. Okay, things are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I got out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys can go and enjoy your school life. If you get lonely, just give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya later! Okay, thank god I am done. <laughs> reading lines for him for the evening. Monokuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Although it wasn't all despair. There was still one small hope. Hey Kyoko, Monokuma already mentioned it, but... What was that key that Celeste gave you? So... Most likely. It's the key to one of the dressing room lockers. Then that means... Hmm. Celeste probably hit it in there. Hit it in there. Hey! I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, I guess we better go check. Indeed. Are you going to do Danganronpa 2? Yes, but not until, like... I think I might do that, like, next October. Because I do want to do another visual novel, like... In the spring. Which is not Danganronpa related. Like, my plan is to do, like, a visual novel on stream, like, every six months for the next couple years. And yeah, Danganronpa will be in October from now on. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that when I finish this game. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, she agrees with me. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. I'll play this for just a tiny bit longer. I do want to at least get as far enough to do gacha to end the night on. As we approached the dressing room, Kyoko looked back at us and said, Hey. I'm going to go on alone from here. Everyone else, everyone else head back to the dining hall. I'll check in with you later. What? Why exactly are you going alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance camera. Come on. That's not what I mean. Why you? There's still a risk of a spy, you know. 
Then I'll go too. What? You? Please let me go. Standing here arguing isn't going to draw is only going to draw more attention to us. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Thank you, Byakuya. Well then. Well then it's up to you now. Yo! I'm gonna go to the dining hall, okay? So Makoto and Kyoko are gonna go in there together? <laughs> Does that mean what I think it means? Okay. Good luck, Makoto. Girls are like her total pushovers when you show a little backbone. I tried to forget what Hina said. Everyone headed back to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko in there alone. Shall we go? Time to meet up with an old friend. So then. Yep, there she is. Hi, Chihiro. Chihiro. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> it's safe, thank goodness. I'd never heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It was like she was speaking from the bottom of our hearts. <laughs> I just did what Celeste asked. I didn't even say a word and I stayed quiet the entire time. No. Oh, and... I think I might be able to open the, the last set of files soon. Maybe as early as tomorrow. I'm doing my best, so please wait just a little while longer. <laughs> so now we can officially say that the case is closed. As far as this incident is concerned, sure, but... Can we take a second? Since we have this opportunity, I want you to be honest with me. Kyoko, please tell me, why, what are you trying... What are you trying to do all on your own here at the school? Is that why you wanted to come here with me? However... Regardless, that's not something you need to know right now. I don't need to know? That just makes me even more worried. What? Worried? Like what happened during the investigation this time. You disappeared and we didn't see you again. Without warning, without explanation. When you did that... Indeed. It's only natural that they think that I'm the mastermind spy, right? And you too. No! I... I believe in you. What? You believe in me? Isn't that obvious? People believe in their friends, right? That's why I wanted you to tell, to tell me. And I wanted you to believe in me too. Because we're friends. I understand. It's true. Then, maybe I can believe in you. Just a little bit more. Then... That's fine. Fine. I'll tell you. Oh my god, am I gonna get, like, some mega bombshell reveal here? I will tell you why I've been disappearing, and where I've been going. Strap yourself in, folks. You see... What I heard from Kyoko then was... Well, frankly, it kind of blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, she told me a story that was like, well, almost unbelievable. I decided that I had to confirm that what she told me with my own two eyes, so I waited for night time to come. And when it did, I went into action. Correct. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera or a monitor in it. And in the storage closet there, way in the back. Oh. Oh, shit. Whatever's in there it must be big. Wait, that's the girls' bathroom. Oopsie. Oh, right, that's the down arrow for the boys. I knew that. Right. In the storage thing way in the back. Uh, there we go. I was trying to click on it. It's just a normal storage closet as far as I can tell. The secret Kyoko told me about. Could it really be hidden here? Oh. 
what is this? She said it was way back in the storage closet. I mean, but I mean seriously? Without thinking, I placed my hand on the back of the storage closet. And suddenly, as if I had been yanked in. Yeah, there's a secret passage way back here. At the same time I heard that sound, I fell through the wall. I had no idea what was going on. I had fallen through the back of the storage closet. Huh? It turned out. The back wall was like a revolving door and I'd made my way to the other side. Just like Kyoko had said. Correct. In the boys' bathroom on the second floor, there's a storage closet. And way in the back of the closet, there is a secret room. So this is the secret room. But what's in here? Oh, we get to look? It's just a normal desk with normal drawers. Do you get a Steam achievement if you play this on Steam and investigate that first? I could totally see them having a Steam achievement called Normal Desk. There's a bunch of files and what looks like volume after volume of yearbooks. They're all covered in dust. Looking at everything, one file at the edge of the bookshelf caught my eye. Hope's Peak Academy Student Registry? This is the only thing here that's not covered in dust. Had someone been looking at it recently? I slipped the file into my hand. But before I had the chance to look at it, a slip of paper fell out of the file and I turned my attention to it. What's this? You must not leave. That's kind of weird. I could understand if it said, I can't leave, but you must not leave. What is this? My hand feels funny. A strange sensation. It's like deja vu. Those words, you must not leave. I've seen them somewhere before, but I can't quite remember. What do I know? What don't I know? I... I... Oh, what the fuck is this? What? A strange sound rang through my head. It felt like I was shaking my brain back and forth. And then... Darkness. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what started it. It's all over. And with that, I opened my eyes. I don't know how long it had been. Ugh. Ow! Apparently something hit me and I lost consciousness. All of the files have been taken. That's all I understood. The dull, throbbing pain in the back of my head proved that much at the least. Let's investigate this totally normal desk. <laughs> Wait, why is there... Never mind. An empty bookshelf. Huh? Empty? Gone. It's all gone! The yearbooks, the student registry, and... Even a note that had fallen on the floor. That had fallen on the floor. It's all gone! What does this mean? But my brain refused to do any more work. The insistent pain in my head began to spread across the rest of my body. For now, I should go back to my room, get some rest. My body was heavy with pain, my mind was heavy with thought. I dragged, my, my, I dragged myself back toward my room. Somehow I made it back to the first floor of the school. Ugh. Ugh. The further I walked, the more I felt. Things are getting blurry. Can't see in front of me. I 
couldn't stop myself from collapsing right there. And after that? Hmm? As if from a vast distance, I heard the sounds. What the? It was faint, but undeniable. What is that thumping? That sound? It's coming from the gym? As I desperately hold my shaky frame toward the gym, the sound got stronger and stronger. I don't like where this is going. Uh, Bagya? Yeah. What's going on? It can't be nothing. Here in the gym? Uh, can, can we leave? I, I don't. I don't want to see what's in that door. I didn't make a sound as I opened the door to the gym. The sounds coming from inside, meanwhile, only intensified that much more. Oh! Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> Before me, there raged a battle beyond anything humanly possible. No, one side's not a human, that's for sure, but... Regardless, I couldn't stop staring. I forgot to move or even breathe. Why, you? What do you think you're doing? You a question. What's the meaning of this? How dare you defy me? This wasn't part of the deal! Nani? Deal? The deal? I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. Hmm. Okay. But, you do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? <gasps> what am I looking at? What am I hearing? A hostage? Then, could it be? The mastermind spy is... No way. A next generation legend, stand tall, galactic you order it, that's the name of the last one, right? Yeah, we only have seven people left. Okay, so apparently Sakura was the was the mole. I'm gonna play for just a tiny bit longer. Just till I get to the gacha, because I want to end on gacha tonight, as always. Leon killed Sakaya. Say Sayaka. Monokuma killed Junko. Then Leon got executed. Then Mondo killed Chihiro. And then he got executed. Hifumi killed Taka, and then Celeste killed Hifumi. And then she got executed. And that brings us up to now. The next morning in the dining hall, the day after Celeste's case. So now there's only five of us here. Only a third of the number of people that we started with. Indeed. Loneliness has become commonplace. Hmm. That's true. Still. What did I see yesterday? I don't understand. Sakura is the mastermind spy? Can that really be true? Makoto, are you okay? Uh, no, I'm fine. I can't bring it up in front of the others. If I did that, it would just confuse everyone that much more. Okay. 
Okay, in that case, then let's eat till we pass out. Hmm? What do you mean in that case? Because, I mean... Look how scary everyone looks. It's gotta be because you're all fighting on empty stomachs, right? If you fill your belly, I'm sure you'll all cheer up. So let's eat. Okay. Let's fry up some fish and donuts to and eat till we can't stand up. That's like a Deep Impact style, Meteor Impact, Extinction Level event of combination of foods. What? Those are both breakfast top time sellers. <laughs> Still, the till we can't stand up part is a problem. After we're done, we need to go explore. I see. That's right. Since the class trial is over, a new area should have opened up. It's true. Plus, we still have Alter Ego. We don't have to give in to despair just yet. She's right. We have to plan ahead and think about the future. You got it! Yeah, yeah, think happy thoughts. No deathy thoughts. You know? Like, when are we gonna get out of here, right? We're serious. When this is all over, I think I want to get reborn for serious. I mean, reborn as someone serious. Well... Hey, are you okay? That sounds like something someone who's about to die would say. Hmm. Uh, I'm totally okay. I'm not gonna die. Why? Because there isn't gonna be any more murders. Um... What makes you so sure? According to the spirits... I predicted it the last night. Since it revealed itself to me from the ether, there's no doubt about it. However... How accurate is your fortune-telling anyway? How about that? I can usually hit 20 to 30% on a good day. Hmm. That seems really low. It's not like some occult mystery. Well, yeah, it's not like it's ESP or whatever. Of course I'm not gonna get it right sometimes. The occult is bullcrap! I told you my fortune telling isn't some occult thing. So, um. Fortune telling isn't occult? You got it all wrong! Of course not! Clairvoyance is clairvoyance! Don't put it in the same category as cattle mutilation! Huh? Cattle what? So. He's referring to the urban legend where aliens abduct cows and dissect them as part of their research. Actually. No! You're calling it an urban legend! It's a matter of fact, it's true. As a matter of fact, it just happened to me. What? Mm. It happened one day when I went out to get a hamburger. It was a place I'd never been before. They claimed their patties were 100% all beef. So I got a burger to... and then... I got a burger to go and then headed home. But... And before long... The end is nigh! The sky was filled with a mysterious blinding light. <laughs> Some crazy beam came out of nowhere and locked onto my hamburger. What do you mean, hero? No, I refuse to believe this. No, I, I, I think this dude's just high on something. I, 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 no, I, I, no. And as soon as the beam touched it, the burger started floating in midair. And then, still floating there. The entire burger started coming apart! <laughs> One part of it just vanished, while the rest fell back into my hand. Do you realize what that means? It means the burger wasn't 100% beef. It must have had some pork or something mixed in. I... I did not expect the conversation to go in this direction. Something like 70% pork and 30% beef would be my guess. Again, th this fucking image. I did not expect to see this at any point in this playthrough. You can't trick me. So I stormed back into the burger place and got up in the manager's grill. And they totally admitted it. It wasn't 100% beef. They totally mixed in ground pork with it. How about that? Now do you see? That is cattle mutilation! I kinda got lost halfway through. Ugh. I can't tell if you're for the occult or against it. You stink of stupidity. Don't be mean! I stink of- how dare you! Ugh. Well, you do stink though. Hmm. That's fine. Huh? That's fine? 
Uh, um, anyway. The, well, that was a whole fucking tangent that meant absolutely fucking dick all. I hope your prediction turns out to be true. <laughs> well, at the very least, I won't murder anyone. Yeah. Me either. I mean, I would never. Of course. Me either. Um, okay. Pressing accident on that one chat. Indeed. Nor I. That goes for me too, of course. I would never kill any of my friends. I felt like those words of encouragement were helping us come close together as one. After so much sacrifice and hardships, we finally became united. But... Well... To be honest, I wish Byakuya and Toko were here for this too. But... But they're so hard to deal with. They only think about themselves. <sighs> yeah, we'd better off... We'd be better off without them, I say. That was enough to prove. We were united for the time being, but within that bond hid weakness and fragility. All star apologies. We began a search as soon as we'd finished our breakfast in the dining hall. We had to find out what had opened up and what was waiting for us. Can I do gacha first? I want to do some gacha and then stop. I'm gonna. I think I'll investigate the fort, the third floor next time, or the second floor, whatever. I forget. Yep, here it is. All right, chat. You know what's coming next. Toy capsules. A hundred yen each, huh? Maybe I should get another. Let me get my controller thing back up. Hang on. There we go. Maybe just one. Hey, what's this? That was a new one. Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Hmm, I know this. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. You know, I'm surprised with the 70% repeat chance. I got two new ones in a row. I bet this one's going to be a duplicate though. No, that's also a new one. Great! Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Right, duplicate for real chat. Yeah, I think I've had that one already. Yep. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Is that a new one or an old one, chat? I think that's an old one. Yeah. Maybe just one. 74.12, I need to remember that number. That's an old one. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. You are the ultimate lucky student. Yeah, that's true, actually. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Not gonna waste too many coins at once. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Where's the lucky thing? What? This again? Oh no wait, that's a new one. What? 
Or is it because I had one before and I got rid of it by gifting it to someone? And thus, it's back in the pool. Okay, that might be why. I know I've seen that image before. I feel like I've seen that ring. But yeah, I think I only had one and I gave it to somebody. No, it's a new one? Oh, okay then. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. But the number went up, but I'm almost positive I saw the diamond ring before. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Let's see if I can get to 80%. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. I hope you guys are enjoying the, the whole bit with, like, gacha. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. I think that's an old one. Yeah. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Yeah, this is where we're gonna start seeing duplicates. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Come on, give me a couple new ones, please. Hey, what's this? Oh, wait, I thought that was... I guess I had that one already. Maybe just one. I don't quite remember which ones I had. I thought I did. I think that's a new one. Hey, what's this? What? This again? <laughs> I did get something new there, I got, I got like a whip. Like a fucking BDSM whip with a rose on it. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Let's see if I can get up to 80%. Hey, what's this? Oh, I had that already. Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. I think I'm gonna try and finish Astrobot this week, by the way. What? This again? No, the number went up, though. Okay, I need to, I need to say something, but let me just get this first. Okay, chat, the repeat number went up. So that tells me that I, like, I know for a fucking fact I had a crystal skull in my possession at one point in the game. I must have had only one of them and given it to somebody. And thus, you know, if I get another crystal skull, then that increases the chance. Because it doesn't account for stuff that you've collected and given away if you only had one. I'm right in that assessment, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think I am. I don't know, maybe I'm just being a hero right now. I don't know, man. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Regardless, let's get to 80%. Got that already. I think that's a new one. Yeah, that's a new one. I love these. Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Come on, let's push it to 80. Okay. I should buy one. Hey, what's this? Huh? What? This again? Hey, what's this? What? Great! I don't know what the fuck that was, but I know that was a new one. A new one. Right, one more new one and we'll be at 80% plus. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. As soon as I get over 80%, I am done for the night. Okay, we had that one already. 
Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Great! Oh, I thought I had that one already. Or didn't have that one already. Never mind. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Keep in mind, chat, I've got a bunch of items from Gacha. Like, I'm trying to remember, have I seen that picture before? Okay, I have that one already. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Come on, new item. Nope, old item. It's the same one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. See if I can get it before I go under 100 coins. I love these. There we go. Tell you what, six more coins. See if I can get a lucky out of it. It's shaking. Oh, wow. This is cool. Fucking scimitar. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. What? This again? Maybe I should get another. I should buy one. Is that a new one? No, that's not a new one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Maybe I should get another. Maybe just one. Right, last one for the night. Is that a new one? It is. I love these. Maybe I should get another. Nah, not today. Well, that was good. We're, we're above 80% now. Don't expect me to get 100% or whatever. Like, don't expect me to get, like, every single gacha item, but I'll try to get as much as possible. I do love me some gacha. But as we go forward, I'm probably gonna have to start putting in more than one coin. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be getting duplicates, like, 80 plus percent of the time. But I think for now, uh, let me save the game. In fact, you know what? Hang on. Just to streamline the process. We're going to do another gacha next time you start. Uh, maybe during free time. Where is the door? Or the, the stairway, I mean. The stairwell. Okay, there it is. Right, so I'm just going to stand here. And I'm going to save my progress. Next time we play the game, we're going to go up to the next floor. And see what's up there. Because, you know, we've got some new rooms to look now. And they may play a part in the next case. Who knows? But yeah, that was fun. Me stumbling and fucking up a lot on the case aside, I enjoyed tonight's session. It's nice to play this game again after like, god knows how many weeks since I last played it. I think like two or three weeks. It's been a bit of a hot minute since I had a chance to play Danganronpa. But yeah, next time we play this, we're gonna see what happens next. And I assume Monokuma is gonna do something it's going to make someone murder again. I mean, that, that seems to be what's happening a lot now. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll play it by ear. I'm looking forward to seeing where this is going to go next now that we're down to, I think, seven people left. So, yeah, more Trigger Happy Havoc Danganronpa soon.